So I'm trying something new. I'm making another CNC router sign, and I ordered uh, what they call uh, Aura Mask, and it's a vinyl covering that sticks to your material, and when you carve out your letters, you can paint where you've carved out, and it won't overspill onto the uh, area that you've already pre-painted. So we're gonna try that today. I have a sign that I'm making for a couple of friends of mine. They are starting a new farming agricultural business over in the western mountains of Maine. And I thought it would, a great way to kick off their journey was to give them a little present, a little sign. Uh, so we're gonna do that today. And I'll take you through the process and then we'll see when it's all done. So stick around and we'll get to work. Some things that have been driving me insane lately uh, is it's humid because we live in Maine and Maine has the most humid weather in all the world. At least that is my biased opinion. But everything is sticking to the paint and I can't get anything to stay clean. So this is the side I think we're gonna use. I got this side and we got that side. But I kinda, I gotta get that sanded down. I'm just gonna trim that down. Uh, as you notice, the utility knife is kinda, it was pretty thick stuff, so. Again, let's get our work area cleaned off. This stuff sticks to everything. I have this paint brush that is now my brush brush. I dedicated it to that, so uh, probably isn't gonna get any paint on it anytime soon. Anyway, okay, there we go. I gotta go to the sandpaper store. Okay, so this is the side we're gonna use. Uh, I'm just gonna run some quick 600 over it. Now, let's get the Aura Mask out. What I like about the Aura Mask, so this is Aura Mask 813. I will put that in a link below from where I got it if you are interested. Aura Mask has these nice grid lines because I cannot cut a straight line without help. So we're gonna take that and I'm gonna get your trusty pair of scissors out. Okay, so that very not straight cut is going to be the side that I don't set anything up with, all right? Basically all I'm gonna do I want to make sure that it's square, because if it's catted off, we're in trouble. I want to get my side straight. So I'm going to take that side, be just as square as I can, get a nice even edge. And I want to make sure that it's straight. I want to try to keep all the bubbles out of it, which can be easier said than done. Xcive is all set up. The uh, file's all ready to go on the computer, so let's go ahead and cab this out. So there's the finished product off the CNC. We'll take that off and move it over to the painting table and go from there. Okay, we have four colors and I have four brushes and we're gonna paint this sign up. 
I just want to kind of get some of this gunk out of here so we have nice clean lines. Now, they told me what the colors of their farm were going to be, but I promptly forgot them. So they're going to end up getting what colors I think I remember the farm colors are going to be. But it's a gift, so tough, right? All right. I went a little bit deeper than I had planned. Really, I find that you only need to go about an eighth of an inch deep. That's about the deepest for for a cut, for a sign to actually get the desire that you want. I ended up going a quarter. I don't know quite what I was thinking. What do I want to do first? I'm going to do the mountain. And the mountain is going to be navy blue. So I am getting Sharon Williams uh, Resilient Exterior Acrylic Latex Paint is what we're using on this one. I did this all in exterior paint because I was thinking it could be an exterior sign. All right, here we go. So I'm just using a one inch pretty brush straight out of the Sharon Williams. And we're gonna go ahead and paint over. One of the things I want to be concerned about, I don't want to have, I do want the paint to be even inside the carving so I don't get blobs or anything like that. So I do want to have some consistency. Uh, one of the upsides on a sign this big is uh, you got plenty of room to get the brush in there. See, I want to get all that excess paint. I don't, I don't want to have that. Well, there. That looks really interesting. So as you can see right now, it looks very muddy. I made some executive decisions while I was painting. So we talked about maybe doing these different colors or doing that a different color. And I said, forget about it. I like that uh, blue color. And then I made the farm red and that worked out so i'm gonna go ahead and touch this up in a couple of places we'll let it dry and then we'll come back and we'll peel it off and see what it looks like all right guys so i let this dry overnight and now we're going to take the aura mask off and we'll see the finished product before you do that if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, hit the like button down below, and uh, hit the notification bell if you want to know when I post new material. I'm always trying to come up with new ideas uh, for anything that's going on with the tree farm. Uh, leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions on anything that you'd like to see. Alright, so without further ado, let's get to work. Okay. So I just, I very slowly want to peel that off because I don't want to rip any of the white paint off. I find that it does kind of peel up, it does tear apart when you peel it off. Okay, that just about wraps it up. So, now that I've done that, 
I'm just going to take a piece of quite well sanded 600 and just run over very lightly. Knock anything down. Here's the finished product. It still has a handmade sign quality to it. As you can see with the wheat uh, picture there, it's a little difficult with all those nooks and crannies to get everything out. But all in all, I think it's a good sign. Uh, Steve and Christy, I wish you the best of luck with your new venture with the base of the mountain farm. I hope this sign uh, reminds you of how you would really rather feel bad in Maine than feel good anywhere else. And there go, my friends. I'll see you soon. Ah.